Today we're talking about stick drift, a really common problem with PS5 controllers. I'm going to be pulling these joystick modules out of this controller and putting new ones in. I'm not a professional, I'm not going to call this a guide, but maybe following me doing it and hearing my thoughts will give you the confidence to give it a try yourself. So this is the lovely pink PS5 controller that we're going to be fixing today. I've always wanted one of these, I've just got a boring white and black one, I think this one looks really nice. Um, I've tried to do this before in the past, in fact one of the first things I tried to do with a soldering iron was fix the stick drift on my old Xbox controller. This picture is from April 2019, I had a soldering iron from b and I might as well have used a brick and I had no idea what I was doing and I had no patience and I destroyed the thing. So I was dead keen to give this a go when my friend asked me if I could do it. So first of all I'm going to plug it in and have a look at the stick drift in action. I'm just using one of the few websites which allows you to monitor and test and calibrate your controllers. I'm not going to recommend a particular one because I've never done this before and I just don't know enough about it. But take a look at the left stick, it's sticking over to the left and that's what stick drift looks like I guess. Um, you can kind of get it to go back to the middle if you fiddle with it but it definitely needs replacing. So let's get straight into opening it up. Following the guide from iFixit, they have a great video on this and I'd recommend using that as an actual guide rather than this video. And using iFixit's tools as well, I'm gonna start by getting into the crack here between the front panel and the handle. Wiggling it around, it will eventually make a nice satisfying crack sound as you disconnect the clip then you can just continue popping the clips out along towards the middle and repeating the process from the left hand side. Then you should be ready to lever it away from the body of the controller. I was being overly gentle here and it wasn't coming away, I was trying to figure out why, but it was just because the bottom ends of the faceplate were still kind of catching on the bottom of the handles. So realising that it lifted away very easily over the thumbsticks, just like that. So that's our first piece removed, let's put it to one side. Next we're going to remove the L1 and R1 shoulder buttons. This is just a case of prying them out, put your thumb over it so it doesn't ping out across the room and they just pop out like that. These plastic tools are great for things like this because they're less likely to mark the casing of the thing you're working on. Now we're looking for screws and there are four to remove. There's one at the bottom of each handle Mercifully all the screws we're going to remove today are just Phillips heads and they are all the same so we can't get them mixed up. So there's two there at the bottom of the handles and two at the top here underneath where the L1 and R1 buttons came out of. Try not to drop them into the case. And now we're looking for these two catches here. These are two of the many clips which hold the back of the controller on. You need to unclip these obviously but the back of the case isn't going to fall off or really move at all when you do so because of the internal clips. So a combination of prying those clips up and pushing the panel away at the bottom of the handles got it for me. It started to release then, you can see it's opening up. Now this was a real struggle um, just doing this without having done it before. I found there's a clip halfway up the outside of the handle but, and I think this is just on the newer controllers, there's a really strong clip at the top which I could not get to release at all. And I really struggled with this for a long time. Oh and another tip, make sure these clips haven't reattached when you're struggling to open it, that happened a couple of times. You can see here halfway up there's a clip which is attached to the front casing and just starting to come into view is the clip on the rear casing which was causing the problem. And I found with a sort of back and forth wiggling motion, a bit of prying and pushing the rear panel upwards a bit and the front down a bit, it did come out. And this is what the clip looks like, which was I think the clip that was causing the problem, just so you know what you're dealing with. Before we get inside the controller, I wanted to take a second to thank this video sponsor PCBWay for supporting the channel. If you have any projects in mind, check them out. PCBWay is extremely easy to use, you just drop your Gerber files in and from there you can pretty much just click buy. But it does have all sorts of features including a step by step tracking of your order through their production process with timestamps and even little videos showing you each of the sections of the build along the way. So thanks PCBWay for sponsoring, 
go have a look and see what they can do for you. Now it's time to remove the battery, that's this big grey thing. Remember which way it sits, uh, just so you put it back in right. It's just a case of removing the connector on the right there. Use tweezers for this and grab the housing of the connector rather than the wires themselves. With a wiggle it'll come out. The microphone actually sits on top of the battery tray so we need to remove it. First by unplugging this ribbon cable which is the one with the bend in it. Just grab the tab with the tweezers and pull it out. I grabbed the ribbon as well there. I shouldn't have, I should have just grabbed the tab. There's a positioning tab on the left hand side that needs to be removed from the battery tray as well. It's just popped through a slot. So be careful and just pull it out like that. Don't, don't go pushing and pulling on the microphone itself like I was about to do. Now we can remove the battery tray. It's just one single screw and then it pops off, which reveals our PCB. We still need to remove the PCB from the case. So on this version at least, there was a ribbon cable on either side that looked like this. We'll pull them out with tweezers by pulling on the tab. Same on the other side. I think some of them will look different to this, some of the different versions of the controller, but there will be a, a, a cable on each side, I understand. There's another ribbon cable on the top here, which we'll again carefully pull out. Being really careful not to tug it really tight if, you, if it suddenly releases, so watch that. And then one other tiny ribbon cable here next to where the microphone was, we'll remove that too. Now we're going to start desoldering these wires, so take some pictures so you know where they go when you put them back. And now we can start desoldering the four wires from each side of the board. The solder was a bit stubborn, didn't want to melt for me, so I turned my iron up a bit. This ground connection was particularly stubborn, as ground connections are, so I added a little bit of solder just to help the heat flow around, and that seemed to do the trick. Then we just repeat the process on the other side of the board and the PCB will just lift out and it comes out with the thumbsticks attached. We need to remove those thumbsticks so they just pull off like that. Be careful of the thingy in the middle there, that's on a spring which we don't want to bend. And that's what our joystick modules look like which we're going to be replacing, cool. Now for the hard bit, we need to remove them and they're connected by lots of joints. So we have one, two, three here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And these four big ones make 14 joints for each module. So stick it in a vise and get desoldering. I thought, wow, I've got a desolder gun now, this will be easy, but it wasn't. These things are really stubborn, especially the four big joints because they're connected to the casing of the module. I messed around for ages with heat guns and the desolder gun, but in the end the way to do it really is just with a good soldering iron with a wedge tip on and a good hand solder pump. This combined with a bit of pin waggling and a bit of wiggling of the joystick module and it came out. We'll have a closer look in a second, but there it is, there's one of them coming out, lovely. The name of the game here is heat, you need everything to be nicely soaked in heat, not just the solder but the joint and the leg that you're trying to remove. And these big legs are connected to the housing of the joystick module. So you need everything to be really quite hot all the way through. You can use a heat gun, but look how small these passive components are above the iron there. They're tiny and it's very easy to uh, blow those away. So I wouldn't recommend it. Just get the solder molten, remove what you can, keep heating and add a bit more fresh solder to flow some more heat around everywhere in there and repeat the process, just keep keep getting heat through that joint and eventually when you remove the solder you're going to see daylight on the other side of the joint. I think that's done it for that leg. These four pins at the top are much easier to, to get out, you can get these in one sometimes, although to get the pin truly free you might need to cycle a couple of times. So there's my first try there and you can see you can see through the joint but I need the pin to be moving free. I need to be able to waggle it. So I'm gonna have to faff about with this a little bit just to make sure that the joint is completely free of solder. And we'll repeat the process for the other three in this particular square of pins and just work your way around. Once they're all free of solder, you need the legs to be moving, waggling within the joint, even when it's cold. So just push them backwards and forwards and if they're still biting, add a bit of solder and and, and suck it out again and keep repeating that process. 
Once you're getting close, start waggling on the joystick housing while you're doing it and you'll see that it starts to move. Just be very very careful not to apply too much force otherwise you may damage the joints or the traces on the other side of the PCB. If all the legs are free then it will come out and here it is. Again it should come out with little to no force. Let's clean everything up with some alcoholic spirit and a toothbrush and I'm also going to add a bit of flux to each of the joints that we've disconnected and go over with a bit of solder wick just to tidy up any excess solder which is on there. Then another round with the alcoholic spirit and a toothbrush and we should have a pretty neat looking uh, PCB. That's looking pretty good to me. Now look at these components. This is why I didn't want to use a heat gun. They're tiny and they'll just fly away and you'll accidentally inhale them or something. So be very very careful. Quick look at the other side and yet yeah, looking pretty good to me. These are the modules we're going to be using as replacements. They are apparently Hall Effect sensors. I don't know what that means, but it's meant to be good, so we'll go with that. I was curious if they were handed or paired in some way, but they appear to be absolutely identical, so it doesn't matter which one I put on which side of the PCB. So fingers crossed, hopefully it's going to fit. And yeah, that's popped in lovely. It's gonna hold itself in place too, because there's so many legs. Don't need any blue tack, nice. I'm just going to solder one leg for now and then check that it looks fairly level. Then I'm going to solder one on the other side of the module and check again that it's level before finishing soldering everything else up. See I don't think that's perfect so I'm going to keep fiddling with it. This took me quite a long time to get right and that's just me not being used to fitting these things. I got it level and soldered up all 14 joints. Same for the other side. Just being careful all along to make sure that you're heating the pad and the leg and the solder is flowing nicely and filling the joint. With those two soldered on, we can check out our new assembled PCB. I suppose you could plug it in now and you know see if the new sticks are working and calibrate them. I didn't try, I just reassembled the whole thing. But let me know, can you do that? So now it's just a case of repeating all the steps in reverse order. You don't need to see all that close up, you know what you're doing by now. Just be careful when you're putting the ribbon cables in to hold them with tweezers by the tabs and to solder all your wires back in the right place. There are places on eBay advertising this service for a tenner. I have no idea how they manage to make this worth a tenner. Maybe you just get really slick at it if you do a lot of them. Before I put the screws in and finish the job, I'm going to plug it in and check the sticks and calibrate them. Don't be put off by the fact that you have to calibrate them, it's not that technical and I'll show you how to do it now using one of these online tools. So here we are on the website, you can see that the sticks are working. All I'm going to do is click calibrate stick center, click next and it says move sticks to the top left corner. So I did that, continue, step two, top right corner, do that, continue, uh, step three is bottom left, you can guess what step four is going to be to the bottom right and that, that's it really you click continue it's completed done and then the green button there saves the changes so we save the changes and it's it's done I did realize later that the stick ranges needed a little tweak and did that off camera so now I can put everything back together again the final bits of the case can be screwed together and the faceplate can be popped back on Finally, I have redemption for my failure to fix my Xbox controller five years ago. And that's it really. Would I recommend having a punt at this? Only if you're experienced with through-hole soldering and you've got the tools and the patience to give it a try, then go for it. Otherwise, send it off for a repair service. They seem cheap enough. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. A bit of a departure from the usual, but stick around. More retro videos coming soon.